thank you so much for connecting. My name is Prophet Vincent Grant. Uh, this is Ask PVG, Ask Prophet Vincent Grant. And I am answering this question. Um, God said, you are my wife. How to deal with questions like that? How to deal with situations like that? You are in a relationship with somebody and they are putting pressure on you that God has spoken to them that you are their wife. God has spoken to her that you are the husband. How do you deal with situations like this? Now, the first question we need to answer is, can God show you who your, your spouse is? The answer is yes. Growing up, I have heard pastors say that God can never and God will never show you who you should marry. I grew up hearing things like that, that God will never bring into your life a husband or a wife. God will never give you a wife. God will never give you a husband. And they will mean, when pastors say things like this, they will validate it by saying the, the first time or the last time God gave a man a wife, God regretted. So from there, God has learned a lesson that he will never <laughs> give anybody a spouse. But is that biblical? Is that true? No. Because there is no scripture in the Bible that say, and God gave Adam a wife. God only gave Adam a helpmate and Adam turned Eve into a wife. <laughs> and he, so we, 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 need to, we, we need to allow the Bible to speak. So yes, God can show you who you should marry. God can reveal to you who your spouse is. God can bring into your life a wife or a husband. We need to get that right. We need to get that right. And um, we have three I have three reasons to share with you where I believe God can show you who you should marry. Three reasons why God will show you who you must marry or God will give you details about who your spouse is. The first reason is that God is a loving, caring father who is concerned about everything that concerns our life. God is a loving, caring father who is so much concerned about everything that concerns our life. God is concerned about our finances. God is concerned about our business. God is concerned about our relationship. God is concerned about our marriage. God is concerned about our children. God is concerned about our family. God is concerned about our physical life, our spiritual life, the church that we go, the pastor that we have. God is concerned about everything that concerns our life. So as a father, he is concerned who we marry. God is concerned about your relationship. He is concerned about your marriage. And he is concerned about who you marry, who you have a relationship with, who you look with, who you bond with, who you enter into a covenant with in the name of relationship or marriage. So as a caring, loving father, he is concerned. That is the first reason. God is concerned. God is concerned about who we marry. The second reason. God is concerned about our choices. God is concerned about our choices. You see, we live in a world where many people put God aside when it comes to making decisions. We are in a generation where many people make their own decisions. Many people make their own choices. They pray, they fast, they go to church. But when it comes to decision making, we put God aside. Why? Because we want to use our mind. We want to use our intelligence. We put God aside when it comes to making decision. But guess what? God is concerned about every decision and every choice we make in this life. God is so much concerned about every decision and every choice we make in life. And when you submit to him, he will lead you to choose right. He will lead you in your decision making. He will lead you in making the choices. He will lead you in the decision making and he will lead you in making any choice that is very important and crucial to your life. I want us to read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 and I read, I call heaven and the earth 
to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live this is god speaking that i present before you life and death blessing and cursing but i want you to choose life so that you can live not only you you and your seed can live this is very crucial this is very important so when i hear people say prophet i am at that place i have three men in my life I, uh, they are all serious i love the three of them but i don't know which one to marry remember this scripture i have placed before you mr right mr wrong <laughs> the player and the unserious person but choose right i place before you life and death blessing and cursing but among these three things i wanted to choose life so that you and your seed may live so when you are in a dilemma where you don't know what to choose it is because you have not submitted that choice or that decision to the lord and when you are at that place where you are in the midst of so many choices it doesn't mean the devil is setting you up it could be but at the end of the day god said my will for you is to choose life not for yourself so that you and your seed you and your future children may live so this means that god is concerned about the choice he will not just present before you life and death blessing and cursing and allow you to choose whatever you want to choose he already told us that when we are at that place where we are between life and death cursing and blessing we should overlook all and choose life <laughs> overlook all overlook the curse <laughs> overlook death overlook the blessing choose life so that you and your seed may live very prophetic so he is concerned about our choice that is why he is telling us to choose life as a father he is so concerned about the choices we make that is why he told Hosea that go to and pick for yourself a prostitute by name Goma and marry her this is God so much specific go and pick a harlot a prostitute which one Goma marry her <laughs> very specific God is so much concerned about the choices we make especially when it comes to relationship and marriage god is so much concerned about any choice that we make so when you are in this dilemma where you don't know what to do you don't know who to choose you don't know what to choose remember i place before you life and death cursing and blessing what i want you to choose is life so when you are in that place you need to pray and say god according to your scripture which one is life i have three men they all said i am their wife <laughs> i have three women i love them i don't know which one to marry god which one is life which one is curse which one is death which one is blessing which one is life you need to submit that decision to god don't look at how rich one is don't look at how successful one of them is don't look at how prosperous one of them is don't look at how you are so much in love with one of them choose life so that you and your seed will live choose life so that you and your seed will live number three the third reason why i believe that god can show you who your your spouse who your husband or who your wife is the third reason why i believe god can show you who your husband or who your wife is um, over the years i have met people i personally know people fathers in the lord brothers friends who have married because of prophecy and the marriage is working i know so many people who god told them who their wife is and they went ahead and married and it is working i know people that god told them who their wife is and their wife didn't believe it but I just decided to make the decision and it worked out they are happily living together <laughs> yeah i know people 
no 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 serious proposal god just spoke to them that that lady she's your wife and they went ahead and said i've been praying and the lord said you are my wife <laughs> and it, 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 it happened from there and they got married and they're happily together but listen to this disclaimer i also know people who married because of prophecy because god told them and it didn't work i know many people who enter into relationship and marriages because they believe god has spoken to them and at the end of the day the marriage didn't work out so this is what i wanted to know the fact that god has spoken to you that somebody is your spouse somebody is your husband or somebody is your wife doesn't mean marrying that person will be very successful that doesn't mean your marriage to that person will be heaven on earth don't forget we are not spirit being we are human being we are tripartite in nature spirit soul body so you may you, you, you may be connected to the person in spirit but when it comes to character when it comes to behavior when it comes to compatibility when it comes to mutual understanding you may struggle in some of this area so god can connect you but there are issues that the two of you must come to the place of agreement to deal with it so if you fail to deal with those issues though god has put the two of you together but the marriage is not going to work this is the many problem many spouse have so the god can put you and somebody together and the fact that god has joined the two of you together doesn't guarantee a successful marriage you must come into agreement to know how to balance so many things how to adjust to so many things how to um, tolerate how to handle how to deal with so many things the culture differences uh, the personal issues the character the behavior the attitude a lot of things that has to be dealt with and those who know how to deal with those things are enjoying their marriage and those who fail to deal with these issues have worked out so these are the three major reasons why i believe god can show you who you should marry now listen to me what do you do what do you say when somebody approach you and said god said you are my wife or you are my husband in my early days in ministry i had senior pastors senior men of god they say that anytime somebody approach you and say god said you are my wife or you are my husband tell them to tell god to come and speak to you hello we have heard it counselors have said it marriage coach marriage certified marriage officers they have said we have heard a lot of that they say when somebody come to you and said god said you are my wife or you are my husband tell the person that go and tell god to come and talk to me myself the same god that spoke to you tell him to come and talk to me so so i can be convinced let me tell you this that is not a sign of spirituality in fact it's a sign of foolishness i'm sorry but that is the truth that is not a sign of spirituality it's a sign of foolishness so if if if, if somebody approach you and said god said you are my wife or you are my husband don't tell the person that go and tell god to come and talk to me myself it's a sign that you are not mature it's a sign that you are foolish so how do you respond when somebody approach you in this dilemma the the appropriate answer that every every man or every woman who is intelligent and spiritually inclined should ask is thank you for the vision thank you for the revelation Thank you for what you have said let me go and also talk to god about it perfect let me go and also pray about it give me some time to pray about it to confirm from god somebody approach you and said god said you are my wife god said you are my husband just tell the person that thank you for the revelation you had thank you for the vision you saw thank you for the dream you have but guess what give me some time let me pray to receive a personal confirmation let me talk to god about it let me ask god about it let me confirm for myself this is uh, the answer that every spiritually 
mature Christian or believer should give. Somebody approach you, say, God said you are my wife, God said you are my husband, tell the person, thank you. If the person say, I have a dream, tell the person that, oh, thank you for the dream. But let me also pray about it. The person said, I saw a vision. My eye opened and I saw, I saw God seated on the throne and he spoke to me. My son, my son, she's your wife, she's your wife, or he's your wife. Tell the person that, thank you for the open vision. Give me some time. Let me also pray to confirm it. Give me some time. I want to also pray to ask God about it. Let me talk to God about it. Let me hear from God myself. Don't be rude by telling the person that tell god to come and tell me no let me tell you this let me tell you this i want to pay attention sometimes sometimes the people god bring into our life doesn't look like it <laughs> the people that god bring into our life doesn't look like it and most of these people will not meet the standard you have been praying and asking god for I said sometimes now listen to this before I close listen to this before I close listen to this there are many people who genuinely hear God telling them who their spouse is they genuinely and they sincerely saw a vision they genuinely and they sincerely had a dream they genuinely and sincerely heard the audible voice of God speaking to them about you there are people like that now let me also say the opposite there are people also who may think they heard from god who may also have a vision who may also dream but it is not from god there are people who may dream who may hear a voice speaking to them about you who may dream see vision about you but those vision those dreams and those voices are not from God. So I want to tell you voices that mimic the voice of God in our life relating to relationship. Some of these voices that mimic God, that some things that people hear and interpret it to be God. The first one is the voice of lust, L-U-S-T, the voice of lust. There are people who claim they have heard from God telling them that you are their wife, telling them that you are their husband. But the voice that they heard is not the voice of God, but the voice of lust. Did they hear a voice? Yes, they heard. Did they saw a vision? Yes, they saw a vision. They had a dream? Yes, they had a clean dream. They can remember having a dream. But all these things are not from God. It is just a revelation of lust. It is a dream inspired and motivated by lust. Let me tell you, there is a way you can lust for somebody. You can lust over somebody to that degree and extent that you may even have a wet dream about the person. Listen to me very carefully. The voice of lust is a very loud voice. So there are people who have seen, they have heard, a voice spoke to them. They had a dream, they had a vision, but all these things are inspired by lust. Lust has a very loud voice. They can be seeing you in their dreams every day, but that doesn't mean God is speaking to them. That is lust. You can be dreaming and seeing somebody in your dream every day, every night. You see your, yourself getting married to the person. You see yourself traveling with the person. You see yourself going to church with the person. You can see yourself having children with the person. But that is last. <laughs> you can see yourself proposing to the person, engaging the person. But that is last. So you must, you must be very careful. You must be aware of last. Last is very loud. Last is very loud. The voice of last. Uh, there was this uh, guy who came to me one day and said um, he, he has been praying about a certain girl in the church that uh, God has finally given him the confirmation that the girl is his wife. 
And I said, what is the confirmation? He said, last night, I dreamed that we were having sex. And I said, my friend, you need deliverance. <laughs> Go on your knees. Let me pray for you. Let me cast that spirit out. <laughs> he said, daddy, no. I said, you need deliverance. Go on your knees. Let me cast out that spirit now. God can never confirm to you that somebody is your wife <laughs> by giving you a sex demon. <laughs> you are possessed. That is lust. You know, do, do you see what lust can do? He has lust over this woman for so long that now she start, uh, he started having sex with a demon that came to his dream with the face of the woman. There are many women at that place. Every night they had a dream having sex with their crush, with that man of their dream, of their boyfriend. And to them it's a confirmation that God has confirmed it. No, that is lust. That is a sex demon. That is taking advantage of your lust to manipulate you, to possess you. Very soon, if you don't deal with it, it will develop into a spiritual marriage. And that is another case. So there are many people like that who are, who are dealing with issues of lust concerning their boyfriend or their girlfriend. And every night they see themselves dreaming with the person, having sex with the person, eating with the person, traveling with the person, going to places with the person. It is not a confirmation from God. That is lust. The second voice is the voice of love. Is the voice of love. Listen to me. You can love somebody so much. You like the person, the way he dressed, the way he looked, the way he talked. You like so many things about the person and you love the person so much that all of a sudden you started hearing voices about the person. You started hearing voices. You started having dreams. You started seeing vision. That is the voice of love. And let me tell you this. The voice of love is very loud voice. You can easily mistake it for the voice of God. That is why many prophets miss it in marriage. Many men of God miss it in relationship. Many men of God, people who are very spiritual, people who are very anointed, they miss it in relationship. They miss it in marriage simply because the voice of love is very loud voice the voice of love is very loud <laughs> when you hear the voice of love it's like god has spoken i've been I, i've been through it before so i know what i'm saying the voice of love is a very powerful loud voice it's like the voice of god when love is speaking it's like god has spoken to you that is why many people enter into marriages and they are very sure, they are very confident that God has spoken to them. And later they realize that no, that wasn't God. Many people enter into relationship. Many people enter into marriage and they are very confident. They are very sure. They know that they heard a voice. God spoke to them. They can testify that they heard. But later they realize that no, the voice they heard wasn't the voice of God. That is the voice of love. That is why I tell people that when you are already in love with somebody, it is very difficult for you to hear the voice of God concerning that person. If you are in a relationship already with somebody, you love the person already, don't pray for God to show you whether he is your wife, or whether he is your husband or she is your wife. It will be very difficult for you to hear it. Once you are already in love with somebody, it is very difficult for you to hear the voice of God concerning the person. <laughs> because that voice of love will always overpower the voice of God. That, this is the truth. So a prophet can miss it easily. A pastor can miss it easily. Somebody who is very anointed, very spiritual, can easily miss it. Why? Because the voice of God... <laughs> is always empowered by the voice of love so the moment you are already in love with somebody you love the person already when you pray and say god show me who he is reveal to me is he my husband is he is she uh, is she my wife forget it you will never hear the voice of god 
all the confirmation you'll be hearing will be the voice of love when you are so much into somebody you are so much addicted to somebody you, you love the person already you have confirmed that this is the person i want to marry and then you are now praying for god to give you confirmation you are wasting your time because god will never do even if god do it you will never hear even if god reveal it to you you will never hear his voice simply because you are already in love the last uh, the last voice that mimic the voice of god in our life is a familiar spirit when a familiar spirit wants to lead you to make the wrong decision they speak to you <laughs> so you see people they are in love with three men and the three men want to marry them or the two men want to marry them familiar spirit will manipulate you to choose the wrong person you are a young guy you have three women or two women in your life you are contemplating who you should marry familiar spirit can easily manipulate you to choose the wrong person many people have made this mistake they throw away their gold to chase after the stone oh my god many people have been manipulated by familiar spirit and they throw away their gold and they started chasing after a stone so by the time they realized that this is a stone it is too late a man came your way a woman came into your life you, you, are, you are both in love and all of a sudden somebody also came maybe looking more handsome maybe very prosperous maybe having more, more money maybe looking more beautiful maybe something that has given him or her advantage over the person you really want to marry so all of a sudden <laughs> you throw away the other person for the other person later most of these people realize that they have throw away the real gold and they are now chasing after a stone <laughs> they, they they throw away the real gold the real person they should have married the right candidate the right man the right person they realize that oh sh i've missed it he is the one i should have married ah she is the one i should have chosen by that time it is too late they have thrown away their gold and their diamond and they are now chasing after a stone that is why many people realize that the person they even choose is not even in love with them it's not even serious the, that is that has become the biggest mistake in the biggest regret in the life of many people i want to pray for you that when it comes to the issues of marriage and relationship you will not miss it you will not get it wrong but you will get it right i pray that may god lead you may god guide you may god guide you may god lead you when it comes to the issues of relationship issues of marriage in the mighty name of jesus i pray that you not be deceived by the voice of lust i pray that you not be deceived by the voice of love i pray that you not be deceived by the voice of a familiar spirit you will not be influenced i pray that you not throw away your real gold and chase after a stone i pray that the spirit of god will lead you he will guide you he will direct you he will order your step that at the end of the day your relationship and your marriage will be unto his glory this is what i pray in jesus name amen i am not out of good news but i am out of time i'll be seeing you in the next episode of ask pvg you can send your questions that you want me to speak on or answer uh, in the email address or the whatsapp number on your screen i love you so much my name is prophet vincent grant shalom bye bye